Fiancé jumped into the sea without hesitation to save another man. I exhausted all my strength to save her, but she pushed my weary self back into the sea, go save him. Later, she stood by my hospital bed and said, aren't you a great swimmer? I turned my head, leave, I don't love you anymore. Chapter 1 My fiancé and I were taking wedding photos by the sea today, with the wedding scheduled for the end of the year. As the photographer pressed the shutter, our happiness was being recorded and preserved. Ruby. Suddenly, someone shouted my fiancé's name. She maintained her pose for the photo, but her body froze. I recognized that man. Ruby Lynn's childhood friend, Oliver. For the past six years, he's been haunting our lives, because of him. Ruby and I have quarreled countless times. Ruby always said, if there was something between them, would she even be with me? In the end, I compromised, because I loved her. Do you want to pause? I asked Ruby. She shook her head firmly, let's finish the photos first. The photographer guided us to change poses, bride. Lean closer to the groom. Tilt your head up a bit to kiss the groom, and smile a bit wider. Ruby tried to smile, but it was stiff and no longer natural. Suddenly, there was a splash. Someone jumped into the sea. Someone's in the water. The crowd on the beach started screaming and shouting. I hadn't even had time to react before Ruby took off her veil and jumped into the sea, swimming towards the struggling person. But her wedding dress, soaked with water, became too heavy, and she was nearly swallowed by the ocean. Without thinking, I jumped into the sea and used all my strength to save her. By the time I dragged her ashore, I had exhausted all my energy. Leo, go save Oliver. I, before I could speak, Ruby pushed me back into the sea. Wave after wave crashed over me, and I felt myself being slowly dragged into the depths by the current. I swam desperately, but my body kept sinking. The only person I could call for help was Ruby. Cough cough, not far away. Oliver had already been saved by someone else and was coughing incessantly, clutching his chest. Another wave surged, and I hurriedly held my breath and dived underwater. When the wave passed, I struggled to the surface, only to see Ruby running towards Oliver. Her figure grew smaller, almost without hesitation, as she abandoned me. The last thing I saw was Ruby holding Oliver, patting his back. The two of them were nestled close together, her white wedding dress looking so pure and beautiful. In fact, the signs were always there. Ruby always claimed she didn't love Oliver, but when it came to choosing between me and him, she chose him without hesitation. I couldn't pretend not to see it anymore. Chapter 2 When I woke up again, I was in the hospital. My mother was by my bedside. Her eyes red from crying, Leo, you're finally awake. Are you hungry or thirsty? Do you feel uncomfortable anywhere? I shook my head, still feeling dizzy. As soon as I opened my mouth to speak, my lungs felt like they were about to explode, and I couldn't stop coughing. Don't talk for now. The doctor said you inhaled too much water. My mother hurriedly got up to pat my back. Her heart aching for me. Don't go to the beach for wedding photos again. It's too dangerous. Thankfully, they saved you. Or I'd have sued the company until they went bankrupt. It turns out it was the people from the studio who saved me. I remained silent. Not saying a word. My mind was filled with the terror of being swallowed by the sea. At least both you and Ruby are okay. Otherwise, how would the four of us old folks live? I lowered my eyes. Staring at my hospital gown, Leo, are you worried about Ruby? She's fine. She came by earlier, but you were still unconscious. She's gone to visit a friend now. I heard her friend also fell into the sea. That place is truly cursed. No matter how beautiful it is, you mustn't go there again for photos. There won't be a next time. Never again. I closed my eyes, feeling utterly exhausted. My mother told me to rest well and then went out to buy some daily necessities for me. I don't know how much time passed, but the door was pushed open again. I turned my head, ready to call for my mother, but I saw Ruby standing at the door with red eyes, too tired to care about her expression. I looked away, ignoring her. She walked over in high heels, standing by my bedside, and looked at me. Aren't you always exercising? How can your body be so weak? Her first words were to blame me. A dull pain spread through my chest, but it disappeared in an instant. With a hoarse voice, I asked, Ruby, is your childhood friend more important than your fiancé? important enough for you to watch me drown and walk away without looking back. I'm sorry. Her voice sounded a bit aggrieved. I thought you could swim back. Oliver was in bad shape, so I instinctively went to check on him. I nodded. So, you love him, don't you? It all made sense now. No one can replace the bond of childhood sweethearts. In that moment, all my feelings and resentment seemed to be washed away by the seawater. Ruby denied it. I love you. I just see him as a brother. To hell with the brother. I couldn't help but cough twice and she bent down to pour me some water. After a moment, I said, Ruby, let's end this. I don't love you anymore. Upon hearing that, she slammed the cup onto the table. You're ending our six-year relationship over something so trivial. 
I looked at her angry eyes, filled with emotions I couldn't understand. Slowly, I said, I saved you, but you pushed me back into the sea for the sake of a stranger. I didn't have the strength to call for help, yet you walked away without looking back. I almost died in the sea, and you call this trivial. Her emotions collapsed all at once, and she cried on my shoulder, Husband, I was wrong. This was the first time she had ever apologized, and the first time she called me husband. I really thought you could swim back. Husband, I was wrong. Please forgive me. I pushed her away directly. You were wrong, but I won't forgive you. Ruby, we're over. You can leave now. She looked up, her face filled with shock. Then she raised her voice. Leo, I've already apologized and promised there won't be a next time. Why won't you let it go? I'd had enough. Don't you understand? I said we're over. Please leave. At this moment, the door was suddenly pushed open. Are you serious right now? Oliver barged in. Looking down at me with disdain, Ruby said she didn't mean it and even cried to apologize. What more do you want? I looked up at him and couldn't help but sneer. Perhaps my usual silence made him think I was weak. And who do you think you are to come here and criticize me? Oliver glared at me. Disdainful. I've grown up with Ruby. She's like a sister to me. I can't stand seeing you bully her. I picked up the cup with some spilled water, took a sip, and smirked, if you're so protective of Ruby, why don't you marry her? If he really wanted to marry her, he would have done it long ago, instead of stringing Ruby along all these years. Oliver responded righteously, I see Ruby as a sister, the one she loves is you. I didn't know whether it was my words or Oliver's that caused Ruby's face to turn ashen, devoid of any color. I burst out laughing, you two really are like siblings, you just coughed a couple of times, and she was willing to abandon her fiancé's life for you. Oliver's fists clenched tightly, you're still alive, so stop making sarcastic remarks about Ruby. I threw the cup down, get out, you pair of cheaters, if you don't leave, I won't be so polite. Ruby looked at me in disbelief, do you really have to be so unreasonable? Unreasonable. I still vividly remember the helplessness of not being able to swim to the surface, the waves drowning me one after another, the suffocating and stabbing pain of seawater seeping into my lungs. That silent and desperate feeling is something I will never forget. I need to rest now. Please leave. Fine. You're the one kicking me out. Don't regret it later. Ruby stormed out, dragging Oliver along with her. Chapter 3. An hour later, my mom rushed back to the hospital room, and the first thing she did was touch my forehead. I frowned. Mom, what are you doing? She felt my head, then placed her hand on her own forehead, murmuring, the temperature is normal. Son, you haven't burned your brain, have you? You're breaking up with Ruby. Yes. You were supposed to get married at the end of the year. I don't love her anymore. My mom couldn't stay calm. You don't love her anymore. Yesterday you were happily taking wedding photos. And today you don't love her. Did you drink too much seawater and go crazy? Ruby and I met in our first year of college. It was love at first sight. We spent a happy college life together. After graduation, we met each other's parents. And two years later, our wedding was set for the end of the year. I thought I could be happy with Ruby forever until her childhood friend returned to the country. At first, Ruby described Oliver as a playboy. She even passionately told me they had dated once, but broke up because Oliver cheated, and she hated him for it. She said that if it weren't for growing up together, she would have blocked Oliver long ago. She promised she wouldn't contact him, but they often sang together, traveled together, played games together. She used to say she didn't like playing support roles in games because they lacked presence. She wanted to be the marksman, and I was to play the tank to protect her, but after Oliver returned. I was no longer her first choice for duo matches. She started playing Yao, clinging to Oliver every moment. Her instincts no longer prioritized me. When I was exhausted, she pushed me into the sea. When I cried for help, she turned away and left. My mom's face turned pale with anger after hearing this, and she immediately called my dad, telling him to arrange the cancellation of the engagement. We really misjudged her. The fiancé isn't even as good as a passing stranger. She almost killed my son. After she hung up, I asked, puzzled. Wasn't it the studio staff who saved me? Mom doesn't know the exact details, but I've heard that you were swept far away. A young girl found you and struggled to carry you back to shore. She even performed CPR to save your life. It was too chaotic at the time, and no one got her contact information. Mom has already sent people to investigate. We must properly thank this benefactor. I nodded in agreement. The next morning, Uncle Lin and Aunt Lin came to the hospital in person. I heard that before they came to the hospital, they first visited my parents to apologize. They were furious, especially Uncle Lin. He almost hit Ruby, they say. Aunt Lin was seething with anger. Leo, I scolded Ruby harshly. She grew up with Oliver, so there's just a sibling bond between them. She made a mistake in a moment of panic, but she's always loved you. Uncle Lin, gritting his teeth, slapped his thigh. That brat Oliver, what was he doing following you two during your wedding photo shoot? 
Uncle hit him for you yesterday, and it won't happen again. Then Uncle Lin and Aunt Lin started scolding Oliver in front of me. Then, in front of me, they called Ruby, where are you? Get to the hospital right now. On the other end of the phone, there was a loud wind, almost drowning out Ruby's voice. Leo wants to break up with me. Why should I go to the hospital? I'm not going. Uncle Lin was furious, shouting into the phone. Leo is just too angry. Get your ass to the hospital and apologize right now. From the other end, I could faintly hear Oliver's voice. We're about to take a sharp turn. Hold on tight. Then I heard Ruby's voice. Dad, I'm busy right now. I'll hang up first. You ungrateful brat. Uncle Lin was so angry that he almost smashed the phone. But then he remembered I was still there. So he put it away and took a few deep breaths to calm down. When he turned back to me, his face was calm. Ruby is busy with work outside. She'll come by later to apologize in person. My mom stood up abruptly. Uncle Lin. Ruby is with that boy. Isn't she? He even told her to hold on tight. If they're so close already, there's no need to trouble my son anymore. My son doesn't accept just anyone. Uncle Lin. Exposed. Was visibly embarrassed and glared at Aunt Lin. Look at the daughter you raised. Aunt Lin also felt wrong but tried to console me. Leo. You should focus on recovering. Your uncle and I will go get Ruby and bring her back to ask for your forgiveness. Just hearing Ruby's name made me lose my appetite. I tossed the apple one was holding into the trash can. She doesn't need to come. We've already broken up. In the end, Uncle Lin and Aunt Lin left in a huff, saying they would get justice for me. Chapter 4 After a few days of recuperation in the hospital, I was finally discharged and able to move freely. During this time, Uncle Lin and Aunt Lin didn't come to visit again. Probably because Ruby refused to back down, and they were too embarrassed to face me. That was fine. Since I decided to break up with Ruby, I wanted it to be a clean break. I drove to the new house. This place once held my hopes and dreams for the future. Every brick and tile of the villa was chosen by me personally. Running back and forth to the building materials market. Picking everything according to Ruby's preferences. The interior design was also in the British style she loved. She said she wanted to have two children with me. And we prepared a nursery and a nanny's room on the first floor so that the children could easily play outside. To the right of the entrance was a garden. And to the left, a vegetable patch. She had bought many seeds and started practicing gardening. Wanting our children to eat the vegetables she grew. But now, the soil in the vegetable patch was so dry that it had cracked. No longer suitable for planting. Just like my relationship with Ruby. Which would never blossom or bear fruit again. As I packed my things, familiar memories with Ruby flooded my mind but these memories needed to be discarded decisively. I was just about to leave when the door opened from the outside. Ruby saw me and was first surprised. Then a flash of panic crossed her face. She was followed by Oliver. Oliver was dressed in all-black trendy clothes, wearing Martin boots, with a head of gray hair and shiny pointed earrings in his ears. He was the epitome of a trendy guy. Ruby was a bit taken aback. Leo, what are you doing here? But then she smiled knowingly, seemingly convinced that I had come to seek forgiveness and was acting out of jealousy. Don't get the wrong idea. My car was in for maintenance. And Oliver just gave me a ride back. I looked past Ruby and focused on Oliver. He was indeed a very handsome guy. No wonder Ruby couldn't let go of him and was so entangled with him. Nice to see you again. I smiled at him. Oliver looked surprised. Staring at me with a strange expression. Then, I raised my arm to block both of them and said calmly. Miss Lin. This is the house I prepared for our wedding. Now that we're apart. Please take yourself and your friend out of here. Move all your things out by today. In six years of dating, I had never spoken so harshly to her, and I had never called her Miss Lin. Ruby was furious. Leo, what do you want? I told you it was just a ride. Do you have to be so sarcastic in front of Oliver? He was kind enough to give me a ride. And just because I'm with you, does that mean I can't have male friends? You're breaking up with me over such a small matter, and now you want to kick me out? I really misjudged you. The more Ruby spoke, the angrier she got. Even lunging at me to hit my chest, I grabbed her wrist firmly. Ruby, we are already broken up. You must take your things and leave my house. And by the way, I don't like you anymore. Stop assuming I still care. Thank you. Ruby's eyes widened as she looked up at me, but there was no longer a trace of affection for her in my eyes. She was so angry. Fine. I don't like you anymore either. She turned and stood on tiptoe to kiss Oliver. Oliver responded by embracing her, and they immediately began kissing passionately. Were they trying to put on a show of a French kiss for me? Sorry, I'm not interested. Are you done? Do I need to call the police to report you for illegal trespassing? I actually pulled out my phone and started dialing the police. I didn't care how crazy Ruby acted, but as a daughter of the Lin family, she still had to consider her parents' reputation. She gritted her teeth in anger. Leo, you're ruthless. Who cares about your stupid house? Ruby, losing face, immediately called a moving company to have her things taken away. 
As she left, she threw out a harsh remark, don't come begging me later. I made a phone call in front of her, I need to have the bed and sofa removed and the whole house disinfected. Her face instantly turned red and pale. Chapter 5 After pulling myself together, I returned to work. The first thing I did when I got to the office was ask my assistant to list my house for sale through a real estate agency. I hadn't been to the office in a while, and work had piled up. After handling everything, it was already 2 in the afternoon. I went downstairs to grab something to eat, only to be told that my favorite tomato beef brisket stew was sold out. I sighed. Suddenly, a steaming plate of beef brisket stew was placed in front of me. I looked up to see a girl smiling at me with a pair of cute tiger teeth showing. Looks like you're all better now and out enjoying food again. I raised an eyebrow slightly. She winked playfully. Next time I save someone, I'll make sure they're awake so they can recognize their savior. I quickly realized who she was and hurriedly said, it was you who saved me. Thank you. What do you want to eat? I'll treat you. How about something fancy, like sea cucumber and abalone? Can I? I answered sincerely, of course, but we'll have to change locations for that. Sure, but not today. I'm going to be late for work. She casually took out her phone, add me on WeChat, and let's set another time for you to treat me to something nice. I was so exhausted dragging you back to shore that I ended up in the hospital for three days. I could use a good meal to make up for it. I agreed. Sure. We exchanged WeChat contacts. Savior. What's your name? Zoe. I saved her name in my phone. I'm Lo. Leo. Zoe interrupted, showing me her phone, where she had already saved my contact. She smiled. Senior. You're quite famous at the university in City A. So that's how it was. I smiled back at her. So you're my junior. Huh? Zoe knew about me thanks to the once envied relationship between Ruby and me that had been the talk of the entire university. I heard that our story was still circulating on campus, which is how Zoe, who was three years behind me, knew who I was. I asked Zoe about the day I almost drowned and learned that she had gone to the beach alone to clear her mind when she saw me struggling in the water. Despite being only one, six meters tall, she used all her strength to drag me ashore and was so exhausted that she spent three days in the hospital recovering. I felt guilty and wanted to make it up to her but she refused, only agreeing to let me treat her to a meal. As we were both getting back to work, we parted ways. When I returned to the office, Ruby was already sitting inside. Where have you been? I thought, does it matter to you where I go? From the moment I decided to end things, I let go completely. I blocked all contact with Ruby and hadn't reached out to her since. It might take some getting used to, but compared to my life, this discomfort was insignificant. And as for her, without the care and love I had given her for six years, what else could she do but cling to Oliver? But Oliver was a playboy, not someone who would give her promises and a future like I did. Ruby took a few steps closer, reaching out to take my hand but then pulling back. She looked at me with a hint of sadness in her eyes. These past few days, I've been going to that hot pot place on East Street every day, eating the spicy pot. I nodded indifferently and walked past her to my desk. Just seeing her annoyed me. Her eyes gradually reddened. Every time, I was overwhelmed by the spiciness. You like spicy food but you always accompanied me in eating mild Cantonese dishes. When the spiciness made me cry, I thought about how you must have felt that the food was tasteless and how unhappy you must have been. In our relationship, you were always the one accommodating me, so much so that I got used to you forgiving everything I did. Her expression was remorseful, yet she looked at me as if she wanted me to console her. Leo, I realize now that I was wrong. I was starting to lose patience. We've already broken up. What's the point of saying this now? Tears welled up in her eyes and I was really out of patience. I need to work. If you don't have anything else, please leave. Leo. Her voice was full of sadness, and she finally broke down. I really don't love Oliver. The one I love is you. I admit I was reckless because I thought you loved me so much, that you wouldn't leave me. So, so you think that after almost losing my life, I should continue to tolerate everything you do without question. I interrupted her. She bit her lip and cried even harder. I completely lost my patience. Ruby. Stop dwelling on the past. It's all over but I still love you. What do I have to do for you to forgive me? She asked in a sorrowful tone. I slid my chair back a bit. Just don't appear in front of me anymore. She rushed over and grabbed my hand. Leo. Don't say hurtful things that you don't mean. It'll only push us further apart. Is this woman crazy? If I couldn't deal with her, I could at least avoid her. I practically ran out of the office and told security not to let Ruby into the company again. As soon as I got home, I received a message from Zoe. Senior. I'm free on Saturday. I quickly replied. Great. Let's plan for Saturday. On Saturday morning, I went to pick up Zoe as planned. She came running over in casual clothes, a bit of sweat glistening on her forehead. Senior. Let's go. She smiled at me with her tiger teeth showing. Don't run. What's the rush? I grabbed a bottle of water from the trunk and handed it to her. Senior. 
Girls prefer drinking bubble tea. I could hear a hint of playful teasing in her voice. Okay, I smiled. Let's go get some bubble tea. Thanks, senior. Zoe squinted as she smiled, making the day seem even brighter. I drove straight to the bubble tea shop before I could even ask her what she wanted. She had already gotten out of the car and ordered for herself. Then she turned to ask me, Senior, what do you want? Ruby always controlled her weight and never drank bubble tea. Nor did she let me have any. Since we were already here, I realized I actually felt like having some. But since I'd never ordered it before, I wasn't sure what would taste good. Anything is fine. Then the same as mine. With two identical cups of bubble tea in hand, I turned to look at Zoe. For some reason, I felt particularly happy. As we drank the bubble tea, I asked her where she wanted to eat. Zoe suggested we go shopping at the mall, and I agreed. Since she didn't want me to compensate her, treating her this way seemed like a good idea. I accompanied Zoe from the first to the fifth floor of the mall. She bought four reasonably priced items in total, but she never gave me the chance to pay. She said, thanks for accompanying me, senior. Happy to do it. After shopping, Zoe suggested we eat hot pot. I stared at her, just hot pot. She responded casually, hot pot is the delicacy I've been craving. That interpretation wasn't exactly wrong, but I didn't expect her to choose my favorite hot pot place on East Street. Senior, how well do you handle spicy food? I used to love spicy food, but it's been a while since I've had any, so I'm not sure how well I can handle it now. I answered honestly, like a little sparrow. Zoe chirped as she arranged our menu for the day. Let's go with mild spice. We shouldn't order the extra spicy beef, or the broth will be too spicy. Mild spice should have been fine, but since I hadn't had spicy food in a long time, I was soon sweating profusely. Zoe quickly handed me a napkin. Senior, let's switch to a lighter pot. No need. Just stick with the spicy broth. It was very spicy, but it felt great. Senior, you have a piece of napkin stuck to your skin. Zoe pointed out. I wiped my face but couldn't find it. Where? Zoe leaned in close and removed the napkin from my face. Here. I instinctively sat up straight. The. Thanks. You're welcome. Zoe had just sat back down when a gust of wind suddenly swept past, lifting her hair. At the same time, someone rushed over and slapped Zoe hard across the face. It was Ruby. Chapter 6. You bitch. How dare you seduce my fiancé? Ruby's voice was filled with rage and malice. I frowned deeply and stepped in front of Zoe to shield her. Ruby. You're crazy. She acted as if she hadn't heard me, grabbing my arm and trying to push me aside. When she couldn't move me, she stared at me intensely, not answering my calls, ignoring my messages. So this is why. You found someone new. A surge of anger shot up from the soles of my feet. This woman was truly out of her mind. Have you had enough? Am I making a scene? That one sentence seemed to hit a nerve. She pointed at my nose and yelled. You're the one caught red-handed dating someone else. She was making such a commotion that the other diners in the hot pot restaurant started to look over. Some even taking out their phones with interest. I didn't care for myself, but I couldn't let Zoe be wrongly accused. I spoke in a low voice. Ruby, let me make it clear once again, we are done. Slap. Before I realized it, Zoe had stepped up beside me and slapped Ruby across the face. This is for what you did. Ruby's fury exploded instantly, and she swung her fist at Zoe. I quickly stepped in to block Ruby and protect Zoe. From behind me, Zoe was still fuming, shouting. You have the nerve to blame him when you're the one who wronged him first. You were messing around with another man while you were still with him, pushing him into the sea and nearly drowning him. What right do you have to stand here? I like Leo. So what? Your wedding was cancelled, and you're officially broken up. Why shouldn't I like such a great man now that he's single? Miss Lin, don't be so greedy. Trying to have it all. Do you think you deserve it? I never knew Zoe could be so sharp-tongued. Ruby's eyes welled up with tears, and she looked at me pitifully, hoping I would step in to defend her. Without a moment's hesitation, I grabbed Zoe's hand and walked out. Zoe, let's get you to the hospital. Leo, you. As we passed by Ruby, I saw her face filled with shock and a sadness she couldn't hide. She seemed to finally realize that she had lost me. I took Zoe to the hospital. The doctor said there was no broken skin and no major injury. We were sent on our way without even a prescription. I'm sorry. Sitting in the car, I felt guilty. Zoe shouldn't have had to endure any of this because of me. I already returned the favor. No loss. Besides, it was her who hit me, not you. Zoe smiled. A bright and cheerful smile. Back at the hot pot restaurant, she had said some things. I hesitated, unsure how to bring it up. But then she suddenly asked, Senior, do you remember the pancake shop near the north gate of the university in City A? This girl, what is she thinking? Talking about this now? Of course, I'm still hungry, and I suddenly feel like eating pancakes. Out of guilt, I quickly agreed. Shall I take you there now? Sure. She smiled again, 
I wondered if the slap had affected her mentally. Why else would she be smiling so brightly after being hit? I took Zoe to the pancake stall in City A, and we both chose pancakes with shredded potatoes and eggs. As the freshly made pancakes steamed in front of us, Zoe's pleasant voice came through the mist. Senior, do you know when I started liking potato pancakes? I shook my head. One year, around New Year's, my grandmother was critically ill. My phone and wallet were stolen. I couldn't get a cab, and I had no money for food. When I asked my classmates for help, they all thought I was a scammer. When I was at my lowest, I overheard a couple arguing. The girl said she couldn't eat starch at night because it would make her gain weight. Then she walked away without looking back. The guy stood there, torn, not chasing after her. I saw his eyes redden, and he saw that I had been crying. He came over and asked if I wanted a potato pancake. I was so hungry I didn't have the luxury of choice, so I immediately said yes. I thought he was going to give me his girlfriend's unwanted pancake, but he bought me a new one. And when he found out I didn't have a phone, he helped me get a cab. Zoe's eyes were now entirely focused on me. I don't even really like potato pancakes, but from that day on, I loved them. This scene felt oddly familiar. The guy in Zoe's story sounded like me. I remembered a time when Ruby had thrown a fit over a pancake and I had felt both wronged and angry, with no outlet for my frustration. Then I had seen a girl with a red nose from the cold wind and swollen eyes from crying, and I had felt a pang of sympathy. I confessed, honestly, I bought you a new pancake out of embarrassment. To save face, she looked at me with a beaming smile. That doesn't matter. What matters is that you helped me. And since then, I've seen you through rose-colored glasses. I was speechless. Senior, since we've met again and you're now single, can you give me a chance to pursue you? I almost choked on my pancake. Do girls these days really just say things like that so openly? My ears were burning a bit, and I felt like I was losing face, a grown man getting flustered over being flirted with. I replied seriously, as you can see, I haven't fully resolved my last relationship, so I can't give you an answer right now. She smiled playfully. That's okay. I'll queue up that way. I'll have priority when the time comes. Ah, uh, can it really work like that? Chapter 7. That day, Ruby was furious. It said that when she got home, she started a huge argument, demanding that her father immediately terminate the partnership with my family. Business isn't child's play, and if one side pulls out of a project halfway, both families would suffer significant losses. Seeing that things were escalating, the parents from both sides decided to arrange another meeting to talk things out. I didn't want to go. If she wanted to cause a scene, she could do it on her own, and I wouldn't pay any attention to it. But my parents were worried about the impact on the company, so they dragged me to the Lin family's home. Uncle Lin and Aunt Lin were thrilled to see me coming over willingly and quickly brought me a cup of coffee. Leo, don't hold it against Ruby. She's just a childish girl. We don't expect her to be sensible. We just hope you two can part on good terms without affecting the business between our families. If you can shake hands and make peace, this will all be behind us. And we'll continue to be business partners. I immediately clarified my stance. Uncle, Aunt, my breakup with Ruby has nothing to do with business. As long as the projects are right, I don't mind continuing our cooperation. Both sets of parents turned to look at Ruby, who said nothing and just stared at me. I ignored her. Suddenly, Ruby let out a cold laugh. Leo, you let your new lover hit me, took her to the hospital, and left me behind. Are you happy? Everyone was stunned. Uncle Lin scolded her. Ruby, what new lover? What are you talking about? Leo had already cheated before we broke up. He watched as his new lover hit me and then abandoned me to take her to the hospital. Ruby's words were full of sarcasm. He cheated first but he wants to pin all the blame on me. Leo, you're really not a man. I shot back with sarcasm of my own, we've already broken up. You can hug and cuddle with other men, but I can't have a new relationship. Ruby, enraged and humiliated, slammed her hand down on the table, her eyes red with anger. So you're still denying it, huh? Her aggressive stance was exactly the same as when we were together, completely unreasonable. She had always been like this, only believing what she wanted and never considering others' perspectives. I was incredibly grateful I had chosen to leave, or I would have spent my life drowning in her torment. I smiled. That day, when you pushed me into the sea and left me to drown while you took care of Oliver, it was Zoe who fought with everything she had to pull me back from death. I'm planning to pursue her. Is there a problem? The Lin family was stunned. My parents were shocked too, probably not expecting me to have a new interest so soon. Ruby, consumed by anger, let out a bitter laugh and pointed at me viciously. So you finally admit it. Fine. Very well. You're right. I do love Oliver. You were just a substitute. I'm going to marry him soon. And from now on, we'll be strangers. After saying that, she rubbed her reddened eyes and turned around decisively. But her steps were slow. I knew she was waiting for me to stop her. So I called out. Wait. Ruby immediately stopped. Lifting her chin. Her voice cold. What? I replied calmly. 
After the current projects between our families are completed, we won't be collaborating anymore. Don't invite me to your wedding, and don't come to mine. She froze, her fists clenched tightly, and she glared at me with fury. Fine, remember you said that. Ruby left, leaving behind two sets of bewildered parents. I rubbed my nose and excused myself as well. Without offering any further explanation, I went to the supermarket, bought a bunch of snacks and food, and headed to see Zoe. When she saw me, she was very surprised. Senior, what are you doing here? I came to see you. She immediately stepped aside and smiled. Come in, it's cold outside. I just bought a bunch of groceries. Just warming up. I'll take them to the kitchen. She followed behind me. You bought groceries too. I didn't eat this morning. What are we going to cook? The hot pot yesterday wasn't satisfying. So today we're going to do it right. Zoe's eyes sparkled with a smile. Sounds perfect. Then, she rolled up her sleeves and started washing and prepping the ingredients while I handled the chopping. We worked really well together. As I watched her busying herself, I snapped a photo of her profile as she worked with the ingredients. Then wrote a caption and posted it on my social media. The caption read, My girl. She heard the camera click and turned around. Are you taking pictures? Senior. Just of the ingredients. For my social media. She quickly wiped her hands. I want to be the first to like it. Zoe saw my post on social media and was stunned. Unable to believe it. Senior. Does this mean you've accepted? Her face was full of anticipation. I nodded. Girlfriend. Don't call me senior anymore. Leo. She threw herself into my arms crying tears of joy, I love you, whoa, she's confessing already, I hugged her, feeling my ears turn red again, keep it down, how should I keep it down, she winked at me, then stood on tiptoe and kissed the corner of my lips, is this discreet enough, wow, how could I let the girl take the initiative in something like this, I leaned in, lifted her up, and wrapped my arms around her waist, deepening the kiss, chapter 8, after a satisfying meal at Zoe's place, I went back home, to my surprise, Ruby was standing at my door, looking forlorn like an abandoned wife. She stared at me intensely, her fists clenched, her entire body trembling with rage. You're with Zoe now, and you even kissed her. I raised an eyebrow. Does that have anything to do with you? Leo, do you really not love me anymore? Do you really hate me so much that you have to use another woman to hurt me? I was utterly annoyed. Ruby, stop showing off like a peacock. Not loving you doesn't mean I hate you. Can you just stop bothering me? Ruby closed her eyes in despair. Tears streaming down her face. Fine. Remember the despair you're giving me. Don't regret it later. She ripped off the necklace I had given her when we got engaged, threw it to the ground, and stormed off in anger. She left completely heartbroken. That afternoon, I saw Ruby's post on social media, flaunting her marriage certificate. The caption read, My him. So childish. Did she really think I would care or get upset about this? Without love, she had nothing left to rely on to act out. Even if she got married ten times, I wouldn't give her a second glance. I promptly added her to my blocked list. The next day, my parents told me that the Lin family was in chaos. Right after Oliver and Ruby registered their marriage, he immediately went to a hotel with a young model. Aunt Lin was so furious that she ended up in the hospital. Uncle Lin wanted to cut all ties with Ruby. My mom asked if I wanted to visit the elderly Lin couple, but I refused. Not only did I refuse to visit, but I also decided to distance myself completely. That very day, I moved in with Zoe. Every day. Zoe and I went to work together, shopped for groceries after work, cooked dinner at home, and spent our vacations traveling. The days were simple, but life was peaceful and fulfilling. The next time I heard about Ruby was three months later. She had divorced Oliver. One night, she called me, crying. Leo, I was wrong. I was really wrong. I shouldn't have married him out of spite. Please, come back. I'm begging you. Don't leave me. I interrupted her. Who are you? Do I know you? I hung up and blocked her again. A hand slid around my neck, and a playful voice asked, Who was that? Just a telemarketer. My lips were suddenly sealed with a kiss. Shall we continue? Of course. 